This is the AH-1 Zulu, also known as the Viper, and this is of course one of the Tier 7 helicopters for the Americans in War Thunder. This was in fact the original top helicopter for this tech tree, which was released back during patch 1.81. The Viper currently sits at a BR of 10.0, which can allow for some rather nice down tier games, with a lot less of the advanced anti-aircraft vehicles and helicopters that you would usually be worrying about when playing at 10.3. And the Viper does carry a very nice variety of weapons to suit many different play styles and potential mission objectives, with some of the more generic payloads consisting of Hydra 70 unguided rockets and the M134 minigun pods that will usually be complementing your ATGM loadout. And talking of ATGMs, the Viper can carry three different types of anti-tank missiles that you will research as you go through the modifications for this helicopter. The first and least advanced is the TOW-1. This is in fact the same missile that is featured on other American helis such as the UH-1C and the AH-1F, although unlike on those helicopters, the TOW-1s on the Viper can be locked onto targets thanks to the helicopter's more advanced sight systems. The TOW-1 itself has 630mm of penetration, with a range of 3km and a maximum velocity of 296 meters per second. Once you have unlocked the TOW-1, you can then move on to researching the TOW-2. As you can probably guess, this is an improved version of the TOW missile, with a range increase to almost 4km, as well as a higher maximum velocity of 329 meters per second, as well as a penetration increase to 900 millimeters. Overall, this missile is a fair improvement over the earlier TOW variant, and will also allow for locking onto enemy targets. The third and final type of anti-tank missile is slightly different. Whereas the TOWs both use sack loss guidance, this missile uses a laser designator for targeting, and this is of course the AGM-114B Hellfire. Now the Hellfire definitely demonstrates a considerable range increase over the TOWs with a capable range of 8km, which will allow you to maintain a pretty good safe distance from the enemy on most maps. The Hellfire also has a maximum velocity of 475 meters per second and can penetrate up to 1,100 millimeters of armor. Now by the base stats of the Hellfire, it is considerably better than the Toes, although the Toes can actually be superior in some situations, especially on maps with lots of tree cover, where precise use of the laser designator for the Hellfire might be a bit tricky. Nonetheless though, the Hellfire is a very good weapon for ground RB especially. As for defending against aircraft and enemy helis, you have a few options. Firstly, your 20mm M197 revolver cannon. It can pack quite a punch. It is mounted in a flexible turret in the nose and has a fire rate of 1,500 rounds per minute. This can be used to defend against aircraft in close quarters or perhaps for attacking ground targets with up to 53mm of penetration on the ground target belts. For one thing, this does make this quite good at picking up some ground kills in heli EC especially. You can also mount a pair of A9L sidewinders on the ends of the stub wings. These are all aspect missiles with a G overload of 20G and a maximum velocity of 1000 meters per second. Generally speaking, these will track a target quite well, uh, even from long range, although cannon cases require you to get relatively close to the target to actually acquire a lock. Another thing worth mentioning is that the seeker for the missile doesn't actually stay active for that long and usually remains on for about eight to 10 seconds before shutting off if a lock is not acquired. So moving on to additional systems, the Viper has essentially everything that you would be needing. Missile approach warning and radar warning receiver are the two major systems that will allow for the detection of threats on the battlefield, and the missile approach warning also allows for the automatic deployment of the 120 flares that are carried by the Viper. The exhausts also have built-in hover infrared suppressor system, which will make it a bit more difficult for those IR guided missiles to lock onto your heli in the first place. The Viper's sight system allows for the locking of enemy targets and can also be used with a thermal sight mode, as well as the Viper also just having night vision in third person view. In game, the Viper currently does not have access to any radar systems, but in real life it can mount the longbow radar on the end of one of its stub wings, so this could potentially be added to War Thunder in the future as a modification. 
Unfortunately, the Viper does not currently feature a fully detailed cockpit model, nor does it feature any additional skins, although some are available on Live.WarThunder. In terms of game modes, it can be played in Ground Simulator and RB, as well as Arcade Assault and Helicopter Battles. In this video, I will be looking over all of them aside from Simulator, with more of a focus on Ground RB. So starting off in Ground RB, taking what I would consider to be my standard payload, uh, 16 of the AGM 114B Hellfires, two AIM-9Ls, and then of course the 20mm cannon with the air target rounds. Now in this game, my main uh, plan was essentially to go up onto this hill line and try and kill enemy helis. First target to K50, I do fire a hellfire at him, although unfortunately that doesn't hit, and he gets close enough that I resort to using the gun. Luckily for me, I'm able to take him down before he is able to do essentially any damage to my helicopter. So, you know, a fairly decent engagement there. I got away unscathed, he went down. A successful first kill and of course eliminating a ka-50 is something that my team on the ground will likely be quite happy about and now coming up we have a double whammy of air kills firstly a assault n tendar a french jet fighter fire the a9l and this is a very good demonstration of the long flight times that this missile is capable of while intercepting a target as you saw I tracked the missile for a while, the rocket engine has now uh, finished firing, no longer propelling itself, and the missile just continues gliding, hits the target, and that's a kill. And generally that is a much longer flight time than you would get with Manpads missiles such as a Mistral or a Stinger. Now we have an A129 International, really a personal favourite of mine, I really do like that heli, firing some Hellfires, attempting to get a hit. Um, the Hellfires can hit uh, enemy helis, although in this case, they only just missed, um, so unfortunately I was not able to kill him. He fired a missile at me, but now I'm going to use the gun from a relatively long range, and luckily, I do knock out his pilot. The A129, as said, favourite of mine, very nice heli, but it doesn't exactly have much on the side of armour around the pilots, meaning that uh, you can get pilot sniped very easily, as he did there. And by the time I had gone from my airfield along that hill line, uh, the game was essentially over. We've decapped the enemy point, we have air superiority with multiple aircraft up, and I'm just here bullying this poor little T-64. First Hellfire knocks out the engine, second one contacts the back of the turret, knocks out the remainder of his crew, giving me my one and only ground kill of this game. And shortly after that, uh, all the enemy vehicles were dead, game was over, and I would say that was a relatively successful game. Knocked out some enemy helis, knocked out an enemy aircraft, generally demonstrating at least the air-to-air -air capabilities in Ground RB relatively well. Now this second game is going to be very different. Uh, I essentially face no airborne threats during this match. This is purely an air-to-ground confrontation. Uh, I'm off in the hills using this hilly area as cover, have a clear visual on some enemy tanks, first kill is a T-62, and of course I did have visual of some others. Uh, briefly just slowing down my heli uh, to stop it drifting too close to the battlefield, I want to stay in this hilly area so if I get locked onto by an AA for example, I can then lower my heli and go hide in the hills rather than just be hovering out in the open where I will very easily be shot down. Now this map, jungle, as you can see, lots of trees, lots of bushes, and you may remember me saying that on maps with lots of trees and such, using the laser desert nature on the hellfires can be tricky. Luckily, my first few targets are very much out in the open. I just set a T-64 on fire. This other T-64 is about to be hit by one of my hellfires. He will also be set on fire. And, you know, luckily for me, it would appear that neither of them have FPE as they both burn down. I do prepare to fire a second missile. Uh, taking a brief moment to take a look at this A129, luckily he gets killed by someone else, first one burns down, and then very quickly after that the second one also burns down. Now an example of why sort of tree maps are not the best for the hellfires, target in the trees, I try to lock, I fire a missile, and he goes down into the trees. Now I can still roughly see him, but it's highly unlikely the missile is going to hit, I do not have a clear view for the laser designator. If I had the toes, for example, I would be able to take that missile through the trees to where I can roughly see the target's heat signature and I should be able to get the kill, but you simply can't do that with the Hellfires. That Leopard 2A5 was behind some trees. Luckily, though, I was able to get an angle where I could just keep the designator on a piece of his turret that wasn't disturbed by the trees or the bushes, and I could kill him. Same for this Leo 2K. Gap in the tree line can point the designator through without it being disturbed by any of the trees, and I can hit the target and get that kill. 
Hopefully though that does roughly demonstrate what I meant earlier when I said that the Toes can in some situations be superior to the Hellfires despite the uh, lesser stats of those missiles. Generally though in most cases you can find a go around. Uh, in a lot of these cases you would have seen that I was able to get my helicopter in a certain position or angle where I could see through the trees, get a clear route to the target for the designator and take that down. And, you know, by the time I'm getting this kill here, the game's essentially over. There's a few enemies left. They're really not spawning any uh, air tar, any aircraft, any helis. Um, I would doubt at this point that they would have the points to, as most of them are only spawning in SPAA, which tends to signal that they're sort of on their last spawn, and there's not much else they can do. But generally, seven kills there. Uh, not the best game I've had, but it is the best one that I recorded. Uh, I did this game, actually, uh, just the day before making this video. Uh, this was one of the sort of last ones I did, as I thought it was a good demonstration of using the Hellfires in a slightly challenging map environment, but still using them somewhat successfully. That's pretty much it for Ground RB though, we've uh, obviously first game demonstrated anti-heli usage in Ground RB, as well as a what I would say was a decent demonstration of the long range capabilities of the AIM-9L missile. Uh, this game, obviously air to ground, we killed some MBTs, we killed some AAs, generally I would say it's a pretty good demonstration and in both games of course I was using the landscape very much to try and hide my helicopter from enemy SPAA and remain uh, in a somewhat safe position from any enemy threats. So moving on briefly to Arcade Tank Assault, this mode is generally best for grinding out the early modifications on your heli such as the first ATGMs. Using the Hydra 70s from the start is generally a decent tactic for getting tank kills or if you have access to all of the weapons I would personally take some Hellfires and also some of the Hydras for while the Hellfires are being reloaded. The AIM-9Ls are obviously also quite useful for killing the bot enemy aircraft, and honestly the only thing that you will have issues with are the enemy SPAA vehicles that spawn with some of the waves. These will generally kill you before you can kill all of them. Uh, other than that though, this is a fairly decent mode for grinding out at least the early modifications on the Viper. So now moving on to helicopter battles, of course also known as helicopter enjoying confrontation, this mode can also be used for early grinding. If you can get into sessions on either Vietnam or Zengzu, you won't have much problem finding plenty of ground targets behind the enemy spawn zones. Uh, best thing to do is to sneak around the edge of the map on the more hilly area of the map to avoid enemy contact and then use your stock Hydra rockets to destroy targets. And if you can also get the new belts for your 20mm cannon, stealth rounds or the ground target rounds for your gun will be able to easily destroy uh, medium tank targets, allowing for a bit more RP and SL to be gained. As far as using a spaded Viper in Heli EC, I personally prefer to use the Toe 2 ATGMs. Uh, these are far more consistent anti-Heli weapons than the Hellfires, uh, despite the lesser range of the Toes. If you stay somewhat low, you can generally avoid enemy detection until you get within firing range. You can then pull up, fire a missile, locking the targets very useful. I usually use the adjustable lock so I can lock the target and sort of uh, just follow that target and slightly adjust the ATGM's positioning to make sure that I can get a solid hit into the target's helicopter. The AIM-9Ls of course can also be used uh, for killing any enemy helis that do not feature countermeasures. Uh, your sight has pretty good zoom and of course the thermal sight as well will allow you to very easily detect uh, and see enemy helicopters from a relatively long range. Generally, I don't play Helicopter EC as much as I used to. This is, of course, due to uh, some of the more longer-range missiles uh, that have now been added, and especially also some of the proximity fuse missiles that aren't necessarily the most fun to play against. Nonetheless, though, this mode is still uh, somewhat of a viable option for grinding out modifications if you don't want to grind mods in Arcade Tank Assault or Ground RB. Well that is pretty much it for the game modes, overall I have enjoyed the Viper much more than I expected. The only real con that I can think of is the fact that its agility is diminished quite a bit when it's fully loaded, it becomes pretty heavy and can have trouble recovering from some quick manoeuvres. But other than that, it is a very nice helicopter, great range of weaponry, lots of additional features such as the thermal sight, missile approach warning and the radar warning receiver that make playing the Viper in ground RB especially considerably easier. Uh, overall, it's a very nice heli to end off this line on the tech tree, and I would say it's certainly on par with the AH-64D, at least in my opinion. 
Of course, the possibility for this helicopter to someday receive the longbow radar as a modification does interest me a fair bit, and if that does also come with the longbow hellfire variant, this helicopter could certainly become even more effective than it is now. Generally, after playing this for a fair bit to gather footage for this video, I would say that my preference for a game mode is to play this in Ground RB using the Hellfires. Uh, generally, it's quite an effective heli. Uh, what I was generally doing is taking a 10.0 lineup, a few Abrams variants, the AH-1 uh, Zulu, uh, and basically, if I got a map where I thought the Viper wouldn't be that good, I just went in the tanks, and then if I got a map where I felt that the Viper would play quite well, I would go in the Viper, and generally, uh, generally speaking, I did have a pretty good time with the helicopter. Overall, very fun heli, and especially in Ground RB, you can do very well. Anyway, that's going to be it from me. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you did enjoy, please consider dropping a like. And if you would like to see more content like this, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you again for watching, and I will see you in the next one.